at least that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now we're going to talk about projections. So you need to flip to slide number seven in the presentation, right? And follow along with me. So, um, projections are, as I've said, types or systems of mathematical formulas or functions that allow you to project the uh, spherical surface of the Earth, or another planet for that matter, uh, onto a flat two-dimensional screen or paper, right? There are many different ways of doing this, but as I said before, all of them involve some kind of distortion because you cannot convert a sphere to a plane without, you know, uh, shrinking some of it or tearing some of it or changing it topologically. There, you know, planes and spheres are different kinds of topological objects, and there's no way to convert one to the other without changing it in some fundamental way. So, depending on what uh, particular characteristics we prefer to preserve and which characteristics we are willing to change or distort, that influences what kind of projection we want to use or the projection that is sort of most appropriate for the task at hand, right? So on slide seven, you'll see um, several different types of projections listed as well as some of their characteristics in terms of what they preserve, what characteristics of the original planetary surface they preserve, and which they alter or distort. So for example, conformal projections, right, conserve scale, right? Um, but they make meridians and parallels uh, of latitude and longitude and latitude intersect at right angles. So shape is preserved locally on conformal maps, but not necessarily other characteristics, right? Um, so, you know, things like distance, direction, scale, and area are some of the things that change depending on which projection you use, right? So if you have an equidistant projection, that means that uh, distances are preserved, right? And you can imagine circumstances under which it's useful to preserve distance. You know, you want if you want to know the distances accurately between points on your map, you want an equidistant projection, right? Um, other maps or other projections uh, preserve direction, but not distance, or distance but not direction, right? So why would you want to preserve direction? Well, if you want, if you're navigating in a ship across the ocean you want to be sure you're going in the right direction because a small deviation from the correct direction, you know, and you end up hitting a reef or end up in another country or something, right? So some preserve, uh, some are conformal, some preserve distance, some preserve direction. Others preserve scale, right? So that if you measure the size of something on the map, it's accurate, right? As opposed to being distorted. Others preserve areas, Right? So there are a series of characteristics that um, can either be preserved or distorted depending on which projection you use. Right? Um, and I have a simple uh, illustration of this, which I'll expand upon later. But let me show you. Right? Here, we have a triangle. Right? Can you see the triangle? OK. Now, here we have a cylinder, right? I can wrap this paper around the cylinder, right? And the triangle is still a triangle. The angles of the triangle are still the same. And I can unwrap it, and the triangle remains undistorted, right? So a cylindrical version of this flat paper preserves the characteristics of the triangle. On the other hand, if I try to wrap it around this sphere, right, there is in fact no way to do that without distorting it, right? Um, 
if in fact you were to copy this triangle onto the surface of the sphere, the angles, among other things, would have to change, right? If you draw a triangle onto the surface of a sphere, the angles no longer add up to 180 degrees, which as you know from your geometry is a fundamental characteristic of triangles. So there are, you know, the different kinds of projections have different qualities and different characteristics that preserve different elements of the spatial, the original spatial relationships. And that's why you use, you know, one projection instead of another under different circumstances to create maps that are adequate to your purpose, right? So if you follow along with me, um, oh, the next slide, which I think is number eight, is just a joke. Um, you know, it's all about, you know, what kind of people prefer different kinds of projections. This is from, I think, that comic strip uh, XKCD. So if you like that, you'll enjoy this, right? Um, the next slide just shows you the differences that you ob obtain by using different projections for the United States, right? And you can see that, in fact, the differences are really quite substantial. They're, they're not at all minor, right? I mean, if you look at New England, for example, depending on which projection you choose, Maine doesn't even necessarily overlap. The state of Maine doesn't necessarily overlap, right? So these are really major differences. You've probably all seen probably Mercator projection maps in which Greenland looks bigger than South America, right? Well, Greenland is a big island, but it's not bigger than South America. The fact that on some maps it looks bigger than South America is a consequence of the projection that is used to flatten out the globe onto a flat piece of paper. So the distortion that can result from different projections is really quite substantial and therefore you need to take it into account when you're using maps or making maps, right? So if you go to the next slide, the one entitled cylindrical projections, right? You can see what the idea is of a cylindrical projection. You don't really need to like, be able to do this mathematically, but the idea is that if you were to take a globe, right, and wrap a cylinder around it, right, you could unwrap the surface of the earth and paste it to the inside of the cylinder and then unroll the cylinder and have a map on it, right? Um, what that does is it, um, that map is very accurate along the, the circle where the cylinder touches the sphere, right? Where the cylinder touches the sphere, there's a circle and the cylindrical projection is most accurate along that circle. But as you move away from the circle, the distortion increases. Right? This is why Greenland sometimes looks huge, is because in order to spread out the poles so they stick on to, onto the surface of the cylinder, uh, you have to spread them out, which of course creates a lot of distortion. So the further you are from the circle where the cylinder is tangent to the sphere, the greater the distortion. Right? So, that's one type of cylindrical projection, but there are others, right? You can have what's called a secant cylinder, cylindrical projection, which is where the cylinder, instead of touching the globe along a circle, actually passes into and then out of the globe. Um, and uh, and that, the purpose of doing that is to reduce the, um, the total amount or the average amount of distortion. In the case of a secant cylindrical projection, the, um, the distortion or error is minimized along two circles, the one where the cylinder passes into the sphere and where it comes out of the sphere. So at both of those circles, the distortion or error is minimized. Um, and overall, the average distortion is reduced compared to a tangent 
cylindrical projection because, um, you know, in some places with a secant cylindrical projection, in some places, you know, the surface of the earth is a little above the cylinder and in other places it's a little below the cylinder, but the, the total distance or the average distance between the surface of the earth and the cylinder is smaller than it is um, in, um, in a tangent cylindrical projection, right? Now, in both of the examples we've seen on the slide so far, the cylinder has been, you know, vertically slid over the globe. But you can, you can do it obliquely or laterally or transversely, right? It doesn't have to be, you know, sort of coming down from north to south. So a transverse cylindrical projection is, you know, instead of being like this, right, it's like this, right? So it's transverse, it's orthogonal instead of right angle, right? Um, and that's important because uh, we're going to talk about transverse projections later. Uh, it can also be oblique, which is sort of an arbitrary angle that's neither, you know, sort of vertical or transverse, right? Um, and if you go to the next slide, you can see that you can also have a conical projection, right? Where instead of um, dropping a cylinder over the sphere, you can drop a cone over the sphere which I can't seem to do with my piece of paper. But you can see on the slide, right? You can have a cone, a cone that comes down. And like a cylindrical projection, the distortion or inaccuracy is minimized uh, along the, the circle where the cone is tangent to the sphere, right? And then as you go move away from that circle, the distortion increases. It increases almost to infinity at the south pole in this example, and it also increases as you move towards the north pole. As with um, cylindrical projections, they don't have to sort of the cone doesn't have to come down from the north; it can come up from the south, and it can also be transverse or oblique. It can also be secant, so that it can pass through. It can pass. Through the um, through the sphere and um, and then come out again. And as with the conical conical no as with the cylindrical projection, uh, uh, conical projections that are secant uh, tend to have, depending on how you do it, tend to have a smaller average error or distortion because you know some parts are above the the above the surface of the cone and some parts are below it but on average they're closer to it, so there's less distortion. Um, finally, you can have different kinds of planar projections, right? You can, you know, put a plane up to the sphere, and in that case, the plane is tangent to the sphere, not in a circle, but at a point, right? And at the point of tangency, the distortion or error is minimized. Um, but as you move away from the point, the error or distortion increases, right? Um, so planar projections tend to be better for small areas around the point of tangency rather than for the whole globe. Um, you can also have planar projections that are secant, right? So that the, so that the, the plane or the paper cuts through part of the, the sphere and then you have a, essentially a circle of tangency, and along that circle, the error is minimized, um, and overall distortion is reduced because, on average, you know you're closer. The surface of the Earth is closer to the to the paper. Let's say the paper, right? Um, now, so those are some of the basic ideas that underlie um, uh, projections, right? And um, we need to talk about a particular example because it's used very frequently in cartography around the world and in, I dare say, all of the field sciences, right? And this is called the Universal Transverse Mercator Coordinate System, which is based on, on a particular projection. It's actually a set of projections that are that all use the same principles, 
um, but vary around the globe because uh, rather than just trying to project the globe onto one giant single piece of paper, they do it a segment at a time to minimize the error or distortion. And we'll talk about that next. 